So Christy Nome has had a rough go of it the past week or so. Um, remember, she was, in my opinion, she was number one on the list to be Trump's VP. Um, I think all the smart money was on her. Why? Because she's hot and Trump likes that. He probably wants to fuck her. Um, she doesn't really have much charisma. He likes that because he doesn't want anybody to outshine him. And she's been super loyal all along, attacking DeSantis even early on when DeSantis had the Republican halo on his head. So she demonstrated, yes, I'm the one, I'll defend you. Um, and also, she was sleeping with Corey Lewandowski, who was Trump's right-hand man for a really long time. And so he thinks, like, like she's cool, right? She's cool. Uh, so, you know, she's down for that. What else could she be down for? I don't know, bro. But she's not going to be more charismatic to me, and she's going to be unceasingly loyal, and she's good-looking. I'm all for it. So he thinks it'll bring in some suburban women voters. Top of the list she was. Well, she released a book, and in the book she talks about killing her 14-month-old dog because the dog, uh, she says, ate some chickens and um, wasn't trained very well. And she said, yeah, I took him to the gravel pit and killed him right before the kids got home from school. Turns out... Uh, Republicans don't like that, Democrats don't like that, and independents don't like that. They don't think that's grounds to murk your puppy. That they're kind of annoying and haven't been trained right yet. Okay? Then she changed her story, by the way, and said, actually, no, the, I, I, the reason I did is they were actually a threat to the kids or something. Really? Because you didn't say that in the book. Now you're saying that after the fact, try to cover it up. So she goes on Face the Nation, and oh man, does this not work out well for her. So she's gonna debate with the host here, and the host brings up another total fabrication in her book, and uh, she doesn't handle it well. You talk about your time in the Armed Services Committee from 2013 to 2015. In that period of time, the leader of South Korea was a female president. I'm wondering, who is it that you confused Kim Jong-un with? Well, I think you need to remember, Margaret, and everybody needs to remember that I've worked on ag policy and federal policy for over 30 years. Uh, my time in serving and making policies in this country has been extensive and covered decades. Right, but so you never went to I make North no Korea. Specifics in this book, I talk about the fact that yes, I have. You I've went been there, so you went you to North to, Korea. Uh, you went to the DMZ, and there are details. There are details in this book that talk about going to the DMZ and specifics that I'm willing to share. There's some specifics I'm not willing to share with you. I've traveled the world and I visited with world leaders, and some of that is referenced in the book. And this anecdote is something that. When it was brought to my attention, uh, yeah. we made some changes. And when the book's released, we'll do all that we can to see that that, that is reflected. OK, well, I'm asking about that specifically because you you made the point to bring him up twice and that he was a, a little tyrant. Do you have a question it's, for me, Margaret? Yes, I do. Um, South Korea is a treaty ally. North Korea is a nuclear armed adversary. So that's a pretty Hello. big thing to confuse. Um, I know you read I'm this sorry. book I... before it was published because you released video of your recording of the audio book. You didn't catch these errors when you were recording it? Oh, Margaret, as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, I took action to make sure that it was reflected. And listen, this is what is so discouraging about politics in the media today is that we have the White House that just recently came out and confirmed that President Joe Biden has misspoken, has made mistakes, has even outright lied over close to 150 times just this year. And you've done nothing uh, to question him on any of that. And you're you're talking about a book that hasn't been released yet, that's been corrected before it's been released. And you haven't said one thing about Joe Biden saying that he was in prison with Nelson Mandela, that he started the civil rights movement. If I had an interview with Joe Biden, who I've asked for multiple cannibals, times, so. I will definitely ask him about his record. But I'm yeah, asking I'm you about asking, your book here, which we have. I'm just asking for why so, Why am I being treated differently than every other person that you've interviewed? I've looked at your last I'm several weeks of you. your interviews. You don't, you don't interrupt other people. You let them talk. Thank you for inviting me to have this conversation about this book. This book is extremely uh, important to the people of this country. It is important because it's a how-to guide of what they can do to have input into their government, how we need breakers and builders in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm taking responsibility for the change that we've made. Uh, okay. And, the, and, and the for the mistake in the me. book. And I've told you that. And I'm, uh, no, it's not. I, what I've said is that I have You're decided. You're not taking responsibility for the mistakes anecdote, in the book. Should, I've decided this and... I, I'm saying that this book is uh, very, very good, and I've met with many world leaders, and that um, I, there are world leaders I've met with that are in this book. There are many that I've met with that are not in this book. Okay. Uh, and this is an anecdote uh, that, that I asked to have re removed because I think it's appropriate at this point in time. But I'm not going to talk to you about those personal meetings that I've had with world leaders. Okay. I'm just not going to have that conversation because I think it's important. Oh my God, she's so bad at being a politician. That was so bad in so many ways. So she wrote in the book that she, like, met Kim Jong-un and she, you know, does a classic passage about sort of like George W. Bush-esque where she's like, I stared him down and I notice a little tyrant when I see one. 
it was like a classic, like, bro, who, me? I'm really tough, and I'm really strong, and I'll stare down world leaders, bro. I'm ready for this, and I saw a little, tiny little tyrant man. And meanwhile, she never met Kim Jong-un. She never met Kim Jong-un. And so when this was brought to her attention, she's like, okay, so we, we like, remove that from the book. But then when this is brought up to her, she says, like, no, no, I've, I've been to North Korea. Wait, what? You haven't been to North Korea. You haven't met Kim Jong-un. Now you're saying you removed it from the book because it's not true. It's a total fabrication. and You got caught lying. And now when pressed on it, it's, no, we took it out of the book. But also, I did go to North Korea. And also, I had a lot of conversations with world leaders, some of them on the record, some of them off the record. And so I'm going to, I'm not going to answer that question. But I've been, I've been to North Korea, and I'm going to take it out of the book because it's not true. But also, it is true. And I'm just not going to share the details of that. And then, why are you... Joe Biden lies all the time. Why aren't you calling out his lies? Uh, call it, don't just call out my lies. Why are you treating me different? I lie all the time, and you're not letting me get away with it. You let Biden get away with it. You let everybody else get away with it. What the hell, man? Oh, my God. This woman absolutely imploded. This woman absolutely impl First of all, she has negative charisma. Again, that's a, one of the reasons why Trump likes her. Trump doesn't like Carrie Lake because Carrie Lake outshines him. Trump doesn't like anybody who's very charismatic because they outshine him. He picked Mike Pence for VP the last time around because he needed help with evangelical Christians. He thought he did, right? And Mike Pence has a fucking terrible, non-charismatic personality. Again, he likes that. Total loyalty, uh, being uncharismatic. That's like his main things, and it would help if it's a woman. So she was on the top of the list. After the dog line, boom, she plummeted down. In the betting market, she fell off a cliff. She was like number one, and then she fell off a cliff. Now I think Tim Scott is number one in the betting market. And now this, look, okay, she, you could tell that she's from, what, what is it, North Dakota or South Dakota? You could tell she's from, like, Nowheresville because she has no clue how to handle a crisis, right? She has no clue how to handle PR and marketing. She kept breathing life into the I shot my puppy story. She kept breathing more life into it day after day after day. It's like that's the last thing you do is breathe more life into it and double down, but also not double down at the same time, totally confused. And now... You take this interview, and the whole point of the interview is like, hey, you got caught lying that you met Kim Jong-un. You didn't. That's why you're removing it from the book. And she doesn't. There's no explanation. Like, first of all, don't take the interview at all, right? Because it's just going to breathe more life into the story. Second of all, if you're going to take the interview, come with some shit that, like, makes sense. Be like, oh, no, we were talking about the former South Korean president, and that's the one who I met. And, you know, the, the ghostwriter made a terrible mistake and as soon as we saw it i said let's take it out of there because that's not true she's got nothing she's got it's it's i said i met kim jong-un but i'm taking it out because it's not true but also when you press me and i'm gonna say i did go to north korea i did meet a lot of world leaders but i'm not gonna talk about all that because there's some things i can say and some things i can't say bro no big deal it's just some high level stuff that's g14 classification stuff whatever bro now every part of that was so confused and so contradictory and she imploded under minimal pressure so look, Trump likes no drama. That's why they said Doug Burgum shot up in the in the uh, the betting market also to be Trump's VP. There was an article the other day about how he's becoming uh, Burgum's becoming more and more of a favorite of Donald Trump. Why? He's totally and completely loyal, um, and he's uncharismatic, right? And like no drama is some shit that he could get on board with. Now, now uh, Chrissy Noem's giving him a hell of a lot of drama. So now, look, I think it's now Elise Stefanik or Tim Scott will probably be it. I lean more towards Elise Stefanik. I think he wants a woman to shore up the female vote. But man, she really fucking shot herself in the foot here. She shot herself in the puppy here. Like, this is Jesus Christ. It's like how to not handle uh, a scandal 101. That's what you just witnessed. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.